All right, let's go over example six this time. Consider the function f given by. Now, this is another rational function. So uh, we will talk about graphing rational functions using derivatives later. But, well, if you are kind of reviewing our pre-calculus um, topics, we know that we have a vertical asymptote. at x equals 2, right? Because to find the vertical asymptote, you set the denominator equal to 0. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. How about horizontal asymptote? Horizontal asymptote at y equals what? Now, the degrees of the numerator and the degrees of the denominator are the same, right? This is x to the first power and x to the first power. If that happens, then we go by those cases. If their degrees are the same, we take the ratio of the leading coefficient. So the ratio of the leading coefficient is 3 over 1. So horizontal asymptote is, is at y equals 3. We will, in fact, use limit to find horizontal asymptote later. Not, 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 not this week yet, not yet. But just kind of wanted to um, talk about those things. Um, we will actually have a, a section where we are graphing a rational function using calculus later. But, okay, in using that, can you guys clearly see that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2? That's that line that the graph is just not going to cross. We're not allowed to cross that line. And I can see to the left of 2, the graph is just going straight down. So the left-hand limit must be negative infinity. And the right-hand limit, as we are approaching the positive 2, is positive infinity because, because the graph is just going straight up. Now, we do have a horizontal asymptote 2 at y equals 3. If I sketch a horizontal line, a dotted horizontal line, I can see that the right end behavior... The right end behavior and the left end behavior of this graph, they're both approaching 3 um, as x gets infinitely big and infinitely small. So we're lucky that we have a picture, but I know that you guys can graph this. I know you can graph this from pre-calculus. So let's go ahead and find some limits looking at this graph. First, what is the limit as x approaches 3? Limit of f of x as x approaches 3. Hmm, where is 3 at? Let me erase some stuff over here. Let me erase some stuff over here. 3 is such a random point, um, but, well, 3 is right here, right? So where is the graph at? Right there. So uh, watch very carefully for me, okay? Um, as we are approaching 3 from the left, we are going to the y value of 4, right? Do, 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 do. And as we are approaching 3 from the right, aren't we going to the same y value of do, 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 4? So, you know, this was easy. The graph itself is, the graph is continuous at 3. We have a smooth curve at x equals 3. So, from the left and from the right, they're both approaching that same value of 4. So, because the graph was continuous at x equals 3, we have a limit at x equals. Um, we have the limit, well, the limit at x equals 3 is 4. Because that is what the y value is, okay? Okay, now what's next? Um, limit as x approaches 2. Oh, now we are talking about some fun stuff. Now remember, 2 is where we have this vertical asymptote, right? 2 is where we have this vertical asymptote. So what are we going to say? Mm, well, I can say, I'm going to go ahead and divide this into two pieces, okay? Uh, first, what happened to my 4? Okay, now I have 4. Um, I'm going to look at both the left-hand limit. Um. If we are approaching 2 from the left, okay, if we are approaching 2 from the left, can you see that we're going straight down? So that is negative infinity. What about limit as x approaches 2 from the right? If I'm trying to go to 2 from the right, can you see that we're going straight up? So that's positive infinity. So what are you going to say? They are not the same, right? So we're going to say that the limit does not exist because the left-hand limit does not equal to the right-hand limit and they are not going to a real number. They diverge. So the limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. All right, next one. Uh, what, what are they asking for, for when they say x is approaching positive infinity? They're looking for the right end p 
behavior. So to the right side of this graph, if you follow this tail, what is the y value that it's trying to approach? And it's going to 3, the horizontal asymptote. And that is how we actually define the horizontal asymptote. Um, either to the right end or to the left end, what is this graph? What is the y value that your graph is trying to approach? Um, and we do have a horizontal asymptote, right? At y equals 3. All right, how about the last one? It's asking you to find the left end behavior. X is approaching negative infinity. So if you are following the graph and keep on going to the left end of the graph, can you see that the graph is coming up? It's getting really, really, really close to this line y equals 3. So um, the, the limit as x approaches just negative infinity, which is really about left end behavior, is equal to 3. Okay? All right, we're done with example 6. I was going to divide it into two videos, but I think this one's going to be way too short. How about I go over example 7 in the same video? Let's do that. And that will be it for section 1.1. On um, the graph the function and then find the spe specified limits. Um, when necessary, state that the limit does not exist. Now, they didn't give us a graph this time. We have to graph it ourselves, but uh, graphing a piecewise function is one of the learning objectives in Math 161. So I know you guys seen this before. So we will do this together as a review, and then using the graph, we will find the limits. So let me go ahead and do the first one, the, the top piece. And they said use the top piece when x is less than negative 2. So I like to do this using xy table, you guys. Um, I like to plot my points instead of just using y equals mx plus b. That's up to you. Um, but I'm going to just pick some x values that are smaller than negative 2. But, you know, I'm going to start with negative 2, but I will make sure to plot an open circle. Okay, because it says x is less than negative 2, so I really shouldn't have a point at x equals negative 2. But I can draw an open circle there. Um, and I need to go smaller because it says x is smaller than negative 2. A couple numbers that are smaller than negative 2 are negative 3 and negative 4. And that should be enough, right? But I'm going to remember. I better remember this. I am going to plot an open circle at x equals negative 2. If I plug in negative 2 into the function, I will get negative 2 times negative 2 plus 1. What's that going to be? 4 plus 1, that's 5. So let me plot out an open circle at negative 2, 5. Negative 2, 5. Go up 5 and open circle. All right, I'm going to find the next one. Y was negative 2x plus 1. So if I plug in negative 3, I just need to do this. Multiply, that is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. And I'm not going to do an open circle. These are going to be just regular circles because we're okay to have, we can have x values that are less than negative 2. Negative 2 was just not allowed. That's why I have an open circle there. So go 3 to the left and go up 7. Go up 7. All right. I'm pretty happy because I, I can connect these two dots and see a line that is going down from left to right. And I can see that the slope is negative 2. It's going down 2 over 1 to the right. One more point. Technically, only two points is needed for a linear function, but I just want to have more points. Um, multiply, I get 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. So let me go ahead and plot my last point. Negative 4, 9. 4 to the left, go up 9. Here's my last point. And I know this graph will just keep on going to the left and, you know, go up. So that is the first piece of the graph. Let me go ahead and graph the other piece. And this is a piecewise function, so I need to do this one now. And I will just use my blue pen to do that. Um, same method, I'm going to go ahead and do xy table. However you want to do this. But I like to stick with my xy table. Um, this function is easy. We, we're just asked to take, what, half of it, right? Just half of it. Um, but the first point that I definitely need is negative 2. And they said, hey, pick numbers that are bigger than negative 2. I was going to go with negative 1, but I'm going to skip it. You know why? Because the rule is to take half. If you take half of an odd number, that's going to give you a decimal. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick even numbers, like 0 and 2. And if you're wondering, how do you know which x values to use? You can use any x values as long as they are bigger than or equal to negative 2. 
okay? But for negative 2, I will make sure to plot an op a closed circle. Why? Because the symbol says greater than or equal to. Now, the rule is to take half of it. So what is half of negative one, 2? Negative 1. What's half of 0? 0. Half of 2? 1. Let me plot these three points, okay, on my graph paper here. Go 2 to the left, down 1. Oh, I have an open circle right here. They didn't meet. So this one, is, this graph is not going to be continuous. We have a, 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 we have a big jump over here. And the ne next point is 0, 0. Let me plot 0, 0. The origin right there. 2 to the right, up 1. Here's my third one. And I can see the pattern here. The pattern is going up 1 over 1 um, to the right. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a straight line going straight to the right. But do not go to the left of negative 2 because x has to be bigger than or equal to negative 2. So that's it. We graph the piecewise function. We graph the piecewise function. I can see that the left end behavior, I'm sorry, not end behavior, the left hand limit and the right hand limit is different. Let's see. What is the first question they're asking you to um, answer? Find the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. 2, negative 2 from the left. Okay? So here's negative 2, and I'm going to go ahead and get on this curve on, on the straight line on the left, and I'm going to get close to negative 2 from the left. What are we getting to? We're getting close and close to the y value of 5. Okay? So um, the, the left-hand limit is 5. It's the, the, the line is going down and down and down, and it's trying to go to the y value of 5, as you can see, right? All right, the next question is, Find the, I'm sure they're going to ask for the right-hand limit. That was right. Um, approach negative 2 from the right. Okay? So this time I need to go on my blue line, my graph uh, over here, and I'm going to have to go closer and closer and closer to negative 2. And what is the y value that we are approaching, guys? It's negative 1. The y value is negative 1. So, what will you say uh, when they're asking you for the general limit? Does the limit exist or does it not exist? The limit, oh well, I have it here. I'm just going to go ahead and say does not exist. And we have to, well, let's give them a reason, okay? Because limit as x approaches 2 from the negative 2 from the left does not equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 2 from the right. Okay, they were not the same. Negative 5 is not equal to negative 1, so the limit does not exist. All right, and that's it for this lesson. I will post this PDF file on Canvas so that you guys can also have the completed notes.